Hello! Today we're going to dissect an echinoderm. Whoops, a little close there. Okay, we'll put that back. We're dissecting an echinoderm. It's in a completely different uh, phyla. Uh, we just finished up uh, looking at two arthropods, a crustacea and an insect. So this is an echinoderm, means spiny skin. And you can see the spiny skin there. Uh, this is not bilaterally symmetrical. This is the only radially symmetrical organism we're going to be dissecting in class. Uh, the last two were bilaterally symmetrical. Okay, so I'm going to turn it like this so you can see a couple of the parts. So here we've got um, what we call the, or the aboral surface. So the top part is the aboral surface. And this side is the oral surface because this is where the mouth would be. So oral surface is where the mouth is and all its tube feet. Okay, so it has a lot of little tube feet right down in this groove in each of the rays okay, of the starfish. This is called the ambulacral groove. You can see the individual tube feet here that they use for movement. And here's its mouth. And this surface is the oral surface. And the top part, this is the aboral surface. All right, and each of these, okay, individually, are called rays. And the interesting thing that I, I think is really cool on the, this surface, the aboral surface, is the madreporite. The madreporite or sieve plate. And this is where water moves into uh, the water vascular system of the, of the starfish. So since this is radially symmetrical, we could uh, dissect e any one of these rays or arms and, and we're going to see the same thing. So it doesn't matter which one we choose, we just want one that is fairly straight. So you know, either, either one of these rays would be, would be good. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's remove the tip of one of the rays. Okay, I'm going to choose to do this one right here. So I'm going to remove that tip with the scissors. Okay, then I'm going to uh, go into the side of the ray right here and go laterally. This is kind of tricky. Actually, you know what? I don't want this one because it's too close to this madrepore right here. So I choose not to do that one. Bink, and I'll do this one here. Okay, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So I'm going to go laterally. I'm going to remove the skin on one of the rays. You see, so I'm going to go to the side here. And then I'm going to remove the skin off the top. So I'm going to have to go all the way around. And notice my, my angle. So if I do slip and I go straight, it's not going to, you know, poke me or my partner. Make sure your partner's hand is not in the, the tray. I'm going to go around. I'm not going to go very deep. But I want to miss that madreporite because there is a little tube we call the stone canal that connects the madreporite to uh, the ring canal. So I'm going to go just to the inside of that right there. Okay. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to remove that top right there. Yeah. Hello, Oliver. Guess what Daddy. I'm teaching my students to do? Daddy. Yeah, I'm teaching them Daddy. to dissect. Any kind of derm. <laughs> okay, so I just removed the top of the, the spiny skin and a little bit of the stomach it has come off with it. I'm gonna set that right here. And I gotta remove all the stomach. The stomach is kind of like a parachute-like material because when the starfish actually eats, the stomach comes out of the mouth right here so let's say it's opening a clam, so it uses its tube feet and rays to pull the clam apart. What it does is it flips its stomach inside out into the clam and releases digestive enzymes and kind of liquefies the, uh, the, the clam's internal uh, structures and then pulls it back in so it can absorb some of that, that food. So right in here is where that stomach would come out. So I'm going to remove the stomach. I'm going to be careful though not to hit the stone canal because we want to see that for the water vascular system. So I'm going to remove the stomach right here, ever so carefully. Aha! Yes! Nicely done, Mr. G. Okay, so I'm going to put the stomach right here. Remember, the stomach is like very, it's very thin and, and membranous and parachute-like. Okay. 
came out pretty good. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it around like this. So now you can see uh, the stone canal. I'm gonna put my probe just underneath it right there. That's the stone canal, right there. So the stone canal connects to the madriporite to the outside world. And this is the ring canal right here. So madriporite, stone canal, ring canal. And I'm gonna continue to remove this. I started to cut it and um, I got a little carried away there with the stomach for a minute. So I'm gonna clip this part off. I'm gonna keep clipping right there. And in each of the rays, you're gonna have digestive gland. It's a really cool looking gland right there. I'm gonna set it right to the side. And that's what's going to release, you know, enzymes to help uh, break down its food, the clam. So that's a, that's a beautiful uh, organ there. And then all of this is gonads will develop in, in eggs that are starting to develop. So all this is eggs. So eggs all along here. Now every ray, remember, is going to have the same thing. It's, it's bilaterally symmetrical. And if you, actually if you cut, if this was alive and it was cut in half, as long as you had some of the ring canal, you would end up, um, you know, you're not killing the starfish. It could continue to survive and uh, a new rays would, would form. So you know, many years ago when uh, oyster fishermen, they hated their starfish because the starfish in their beds would, um, would eat their oysters. Whenever they'd get them, they'd rip them apart, you know, thinking they're, uh, they're killing and getting rid of them, but essentially they were just increasing their numbers because you have to do more than that because if you have a portion of the the ring canal and rays you can grow a new starfish so they can reproduce asexually if they're mechanically disassembled. All right, so um, let me go ahead and go through this uh, this uh, water vascular system with you. Okay, so we got the madriporite, stone canal, ring canal, radial canal, and then tube feet. All right, all these tube feet. So one of the things you have to do in class as uh, one of your assignments is to sing the Water Vascular System song. So I'm gonna sing it for you and then you can practice it over and over and over again and you can harmonize it, but I'm gonna be pointing to these as we do it. So it goes like this. The madriporites connected to the stone canal. The stone canal's connected to the ring canal. The ring canal's connected to the radial canal. And the radial canal's connected to the tube feet. And that's the water vascular system. There you go. And that's the song that you need to sing. That's your very last point on your, on your quiz. Okay? All right, let's take a look here. Let's review it again real, real quick. So we have a very simple, radially symmetrical organism. This surface is the aboral surface, which has the madriporite, has the spines. Okay, we flip it over, we see the oral surface. We have the ambulacral groove and the tube feet. Okay, we have the mouth right here. All the spines on the spiny skin. We removed the skin, if you will, of, the, of one of the rays. And we saw uh, the stomach that was right here. Right, that's where the stomach was, and we removed that. And we also uh, found the digestive gland and the gonads. Okay. Then we had the madriporite, stone canal, ring canal, radial canal. Oh, last thing, I almost forgot. Right along here, these little bumps. Again, as I move my probe over the top of that, it feels like a little zipper. Those are called ampullas. Ampulla. And the ampulla, um, are the same all the way down these rays. All the, the rays have ampulla. All right, and we are finished. That is the wonderful world of echinoderms.